Okay, let's get cracking again. And just working on the natural naturalness and the opponents moving dead quick. So I think on this occasion I'm actually just gonna push here and just bring the knight around. Attack the pawn. Let's grab. Okay, right, so I think I'm fairly happy with that now. Let's shall we? Let's go here. Don't know if it was a mouse slip or if it was done on purpose with they're going queen side, uh, king side castling. I'd maybe not. They probably did it on purpose. It's castle. And just small potatoes. Oh, I can see a lot of a lot of king moves being put into place there. Maybe we keep that locked down now, because if we take his pawn takes, opens up space to attack down on this side. Uh, yeah, let's just bring it back. Yeah, so it's just blasting down now. We could take and take and take, but still he just wants us to open up the space around our king. I think it's time to rock and roll a bit. Let's go here. comes to defend or oh, the rook does oh, interesting times Wow, this is getting very interesting, this natural naturalness. Okay, just a quick look at this, just to break it down for ourselves as we're working through. So yeah, it's again it's a consolidation of what we've been working on right from the start of looking at the answer and applying the answer as best possible and really trying to get attuned with what actually happens on the board what are our weaknesses what are our strengths and what's sort of in between and what is stopping us from making the weaknesses strengths all those sort of psychological things within the chess game and it's not saying it's perfect and like again i I'm not going to say sorry for trying to sound like, well, sounding like I think I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about for my own self-development in chess. Um, whether anybody wants to take any of that and try and use that in their own games, then 
then that's all well and good but most definitely all I will say is just be your own person uh, developing your own chess if anything out of any of the videos that I put out um, I would strongly just say please just be your own person um, the amount of times I'm, I'm seeing people trying to emulate you know the the grandmasters and the masters the super GMs um, you know playing real fast doing quick moves and all that sort of stuff they're not actually learning they're just trying to replicate what they see on on screen but they're not actually developing their skills which is a shame because you can tell they have even maybe a natural ability to actually do it themselves and really improve and do their own chess that other people might want to emulate so that is the key thing for me it's about just being your own thing all this theory stuff and all that yes you can do it as part of your study but don't do it as part of your game don't bring it into your game use it as part of your study to help formulate your own um, chess play this is how the lower rated players will beat the higher rated players and we're seeing it even more succinctly now um, if you've ever watched my video on how lower rated players beat um, higher rated players and um, if you haven't please take a take a look at that check it out um, I'll probably put it in the link um, in the description and basically just from there the recent competitions that we're seeing there's the young guard coming through and some of them are actually surprising and shocking the the super 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 GMs and they're actually surprising them with simple maneuvers they're not complicated maneuvers but if you have a look at the video that I had done about um, how lower rated players beat high rated players you'll you'll see why it's because they're not I'm gonna say it in the true way they're not respecting what the the higher rated players are playing because the higher rated players are going for complications and then all they're doing is going well why are you going all the way around the houses to do that move when I can simply just do this to block that off and then I can do this and then that upsets your uh, position so they are going for simple and they are going for aggressive moves as well you know they're not sitting there letting the um, super GMs or the masters or whatever um, actually win they're not there they're not bowing down to them they're not going oh man i'm so scared and frightened of you that i didn't even make a move so that is the massive difference and that is the key thing out of all of this in order for you to in improve in your own chest you have to not do this cow tow business and oh i'll never be any good and they're, they're too good for me um you have to really utilize what you know from them learn from their skills if you're learning from them learn from the theories and all that type of stuff but don't bring it into your game your game is your game that's where you're different anyway so we'll continue with this particular game here and we were narrating more of a feeling type thing within this particular game just an idea of just suggesting just nice and steady away and I just want to check what the gauge bar is saying because I felt like I was doing a little bit more sitting back but then the opponent tended to kind of give us um, the opportunities which we took I think this king move here I don't know if it was a, a mouth slip or not I mean they didn't say anything in the chat so maybe they did it on purpose trying a new age thing maybe Okay, so then they brought the knife, so we could castle. So I'm feeling fairly comfortable with what we've got so far. I know that White would be feeling that they've got control of the centre and they're managing the centre. What we have said in our previous videos is that we like to work around the centre. We like to manage around the centre because we know that everybody's taught to control the centre. We like to try and manage around it. So that's a, a key difference, I think, in especially in the development of this game and any of the games that we've been working from, from the answer. So now we're looking to just um, be a little bit steady. We're just stopping maybe the night jumping here for now while we adjust ourselves, really. 
with the potential for the bishop at some point coming here but the knight is there at the minute so we're not looking to do that just yet then he does another king move again i think that's a bit of a loss in tempo but then i'm thinking oh is he thinking well maybe i didn't get castled this side um i'm going to start making my way over towards the uh, queen side but once they did that also i did think well they're just going to start charging down with the pawns i'm feeling fairly comfortable that we've got a good defense going on so now maybe we need to start attacking towards where the king is around the king gary so we bring this bishop here it's not really an attack we're not actually going to take because all we want to do is get this pawn disheveled a little bit and bring it back we did have sights of bringing it here and just sitting there and if he didn't do that then we'd just stay there forever because it's got a nice x-ray through to the queen as well through to the king through to the queen so we brought the bishop back no problems no point in doing that because we didn't want to open up this pawn as well because then he's got a direct line to start attacking our king gary with his pieces as we mentioned in the game <clears throat> excuse me so as we force they started pushing down with the pawn so now we're bringing our queen across gauge bar doesn't like that i like it i like it i love the idea of switching from one side to the other we're now attacking the king area yep um the king although it's got pieces around it it's home alone because it shouldn't be in the center of the board so that's going to be a little bit of an issue for them that's what i'm thinking that's my psychology that's what i'm hoping they bring the queen across so we now look to bring the rook into the game targeting the knight because we've got the queen putting pressure onto the knight as well so he triple well double he protects so i'm thinking they're kind of losing tempo hopefully good position as well i'm not sure i played it the best best but it felt the best for me okay so now we bring the bishop through attacking the bishop behind the bishop is the king computer doesn't like that move let's see what it suggested knight takes d5 do, 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 and d5 is here knight takes d5 yeah i'm not full of them apples it's a little bit fancy tricky very type stuff and i don't have time for that i'm feeling happy that he's blocked himself in he doesn't have any access to any of our pieces so why would i disturb that that's my rationale it does drop four points so it might be something to consider but in a short play game i'm not going to work through all the fancy fancy maneuvers because i'll lose time and as we mentioned in the previous video time is a key factor especially in the short play games in chess time is part of the game it's as simple as that i don't care what purists say about oh well you know you flagged them or they, they lost on time but if it was a longer game they would have won i don't i don't care i don't care yeah at the end of the day if i lose on time because you know the opponent's messing about with the king that and all over the place it's my stupid fault for allowing them to do that and especially if i've got more pieces on the board i should be able to try and squish them somehow yes i'll be annoyed obviously you know if the, if you get flagged you, you get annoyed because you think oh you're winning you're winning um but that is my fault it's not the opponent's fault so they captured and we captured back so feeling fairly good about this now so they brought a queen queen across i mean it gives us two there but i don't know if we took advantage of that um because he's still got the two there so we're looking to actually double up so it went high for a reason let's see what they're saying b4 b4 yeah pawn could have pushed on to the knight but what really is that doing you know i push on to the knight where does the knight go knight can go back here and then we've got the rook looking for the exchange type thing i didn't really want that type of stuff either so i'm thinking doubling the rooks up is going to be a lot better for us it's it's showing there plus 1.8 but in this grand scheme of things the position it did not feel too scary at all i felt like i was managing um the position quite nicely 
Okay, so they pushed down onto our night. I was expecting this. I was actually going to do a highlight of this pawn dropping here onto the night. Um, but I don't think I did it in the game. So we brought the knight down. So this is probably going to say, why don't you take this D pawn or something? Well, it's actually saying B, pushing the B pawn onto the knight. Yeah, okay, I'm not full of them apples. So we brought the knight down. Again, we've lost more points again from that move. But I didn't see any issues with that at all in any way, shape or form. I felt so comfortable with that that... Um, if I saw this position again, if I was in this game, I would play the same move again. I can't really see any issues with that at all. Our queen doesn't have any protection on it, so I was half expecting his knight to move at some point, um, trying to get our queen off. So their queen moved to the other side of the bo um, board, so again, giving us points. So we're giving each other major points somewhere. Um, but for me, I felt so comfortable with the position that we had. Even going for the doubling, the computer doesn't like that, so we've lost points again. But if we don't believe in ourselves, we will never make a move. So the bishop comes now looking to x-ray through to the queen, but also supporting the, the knight. So I did feel that that wasn't the best, but I thought I need to get my knight into the game. Again, I'm giving them points as far as, far as the evaluation is concerned. Targeting this pawn here, maybe looking for the queen to come and start putting some pressure onto this pawn. I like this position. Um, I don't have any issues with this. It all depends on what the opponent does. And the king comes down. So I'm thinking, well, we can make this work quite nicely if we bring the queen here doesn't like that move look at this gauge bar moving up and down but I have to believe in the moves until the opponent does the move whatever they're supposed to do that then shakes me then I'll do another move I'll, I'll do an appropriate move that I feel is appropriate oh losing my voice so then they move their knight so then obviously this leaves this kind of situation where we can go for a checkmate but I think that's hard to see you know, um, so um, in defence of White's position, I would say that that was kind of hard to see um, that, that you're going to get checkmated per se um, with the build up of the Queen and the Knight in this position. Might not be hard to see to others. You might go, well, yeah, that was obvious. I'd have seen this. I'd have seen that. Um, but you know, I'm sure you've had games like this where you've got checkmated and you didn't realise that you were even in a checkmated position. So. You've got to be true to yourself, uh, don't lie to yourself, saying to yourself, oh, I would have seen this, I would have done that, I would have done the other. Get about 10 games of your own games, have a look at those games where basically you you, you messed up, yeah? You didn't even know you were in a, a bad position and then you just got checkmated. I can guarantee you every chess player's got games like that. So, in a nutshell, this game here, I'm really quite comfortable with the movement of trying to keep it humanized believing in my own knowledge and trying to just keep that human aspect working and just challenging myself all the time when looking at the evaluation challenging the evaluation and learn from it as well yeah keep on learning from the evaluation even in this game i've learned a few things but i've also learned how i play and there's certain moves that I definitely wouldn't entertain um, because that's not my playing style. Um, I'm not really a full tactics type person where the computer is um, and I don't think sometimes the tactics leave you in a good position especially if you don't play like that and even then tactics on the whole unless they're going for a full-on finish should be left well alone if it's just to get a pawn off the board or something and your position's going to be rubbish but you're going to feel good that you've got the pawn off um, I would stay away from any tactical type stuff and look more for positional play and get your pieces working together as best possible